John. I'm a chemistry graduate student at UCLA. And now in this video, we're going to be going over some chemistry topics. Hope you find this useful and good luck in your course. So now we're going to switch gears a little bit and talk about the second topic in this video, 2D NMR spectroscopy. So in this technique, um, 2D NMR spectroscopy gives data plotted in a space that's defined by two frequency axes uh, as opposed to just one, just the one ppm that we saw before for regular proton NMR and carbon-13 NMR spectroscopy. Um, and so therefore it provides more information about a molecule than 1D NMR spectra and it's much more useful to determine molecular structure. So the basis of this um, is that with 2D NMR, we're specifically looking at the interaction of nuclear spins. And so protons with protons or hydrogens with uh, carbon-13 atoms. And these are always plotted in two dimensions. And so I ended off with the DEPT, or depth uh, spectral analysis for the carbon-13, um, because that's a nice transition into 2D NMR spectroscopy um, when you're really studying these interactions and exploiting them uh, to get more structural information out of it. And so plotting this information in two dimensions can simplify the analysis of the complex or ambiguous molecules, specifically very large ones. And so this is often used uh, with large protein molecules, for example. Um, and that helps you get more structural information out uh, than just traditional proton NMR or carbon-13 NMR spectroscopy. And there's really quite a lot of different 2D techniques. And so here are a couple listed. Um, it's definitely not limited to this list. Um, but for example, correlation spectroscopy. Um, this is good for determining basic connectivity via uh, J couplings or through a particular bond, for example, the, between the carbon and carbon 13 and proton or proton and proton. Um, heteronuclear correlation spectroscopy heteronuclear multiple quantum coherent spectroscopy. Um, and so this allows one to pair, uh, for example, amines, so NH or CH resonances. Um, nuclear overhauer's effect spectroscopy and some other funny named ones, incredible natural abundance double quantum transfer experiments. So a lot of these techniques, um, because they're more complicated, they require a larger number of steady state scans. Uh, they're more sensitive to, to pulse imperfections uh, in the techniques. And so they often take a lot longer to uh, acquire information from, but it, gives, it allows you to make more conclusions about which carbon atoms are connected to which hydrogen atoms, for example. Now these advanced techniques pretty much require a, a much more in-depth knowledge of NMR spectroscopy that's probably beyond the scope of your course. But it's good to be familiar with what's out there. So I'm just going to focus on one um, and give you an idea, uh, a brief overview of how you can really interpret these spectra. Uh, so focusing on COSY, or correlation spectroscopy. Um, and so we're really looking here at the correlation of proton-proton coupling. So essentially, you have two NMR spectra that are essentially collected by using a different series of radio frequency pulses to excite the nuclei of your sample. And then they're plotted like this, opposite to one another. And then the dots in the middle correspond to matching between the two spectra. And so what you want to do is ignore the dots on the diagonal line because they essentially correspond to the same hydrogen atoms. However, what you want to do is look at what's labeled as the cross peaks. So what this means is that we can see that carbon-2 is coupled with carbon-1. Now that's symmetrically demonstrated here, carbon-1, or proton. In this molecule, proton-2, or hydrogen number 2, is coupled with hydrogen number 1. Now you can see that symmetrically here, hydrogen 1 coupled with hydrogen 2. These appear off of the diagonal line. Likewise, hydrogen number 4 is coupled with hydrogen number 2. And again, symmetrically here, hydrogen 2 for this uh, dot in the middle here is coupled with hydrogen number 4. And so, for example, you can see that hydrogen number 3 here um, is not coupled to any of the other hydrogen atoms in this molecule. And so you know that it's more isolated um, and separated 
uh, physically from the other protons in the molecule. So this is one example of how you can really get some structural, extra structural information out of this. So here's an actual example of a cozy 2D NMR spectrum, uh, proton NMR spectrum, uh, for the molecule sucrose. And so you can see here on the diagonal, you pretty much want to ignore those, but you see dots appear in the center off of the diagonal, and that corresponds to coupling between different hydrogens. Uh, in so this is probably uh, in these general courses the extent uh, to what you need to know for 2D NMR spectroscopy. Uh, mainly, the, the main point is that simply you're looking at and exploiting and extracting out information about coupling between um, these magnetically active uh, nuclei. Mm -hmm.